All right, the panels over on the right-hand side, we already know that we can click on these, these panel tabs to flip between the open panels, colors, swatches, adjustments, and styles, and so on and so on. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now, these panels are going to offer up different options, once again, depending on what it is that we're doing. Again, maybe it's some color correction that we're doing. Maybe we're creating some vector objects and so on. And again, you'll get a feel for what panel does what. And just like I was saying with the toolbox over on the left-hand side in the previous exercise, there's tons of Photoshop panels. And again, depending on what it is that you find yourself doing most often inside Photoshop, there's going to be some panels that you use all the time, daily. There's other panels that you'll never, ever, ever use. This may be the only time that you actually see those sorts of panels in this training because you never use them. And then other panels, they may kind of come and go, but maybe you don't use them that often. Now, there are some similarities between each of these panels in terms of how they're set up. And I want to kind of walk you through that first. So you'll notice I'm going to use the color panel right up in the top right corner as my example here. So color, each panel obviously has a tab with the name on it. That kind of goes without saying. The other thing, too, is each panel has a panel menu or a palette menu way up in the top right corner of the individual panel. And when I click on that icon, I'm going to get a list of options appearing inside the panel menu related to that specific panel. So obviously inside the color panel menu, we have color related commands and options, right? If I head down to layers and pop open his panel menu, we're going to get a different menu containing commands and options related to layers. That's how it works. Okay, pretty straightforward. The other thing too is many panels, not all panels, but many panels will have a row of icons running right across the bottom. So keep your eyeballs peeled for those icons, again, offering up different commands, different settings that we can make use of. The panels that we see here on screen, again, color, swatches, adjustment styles, and so on, these are not the only panels that we have available to us inside Photoshop. As a matter of fact, there's two other panels that are kind of lurking here, sort of just to the to the left of the main panel column we have history here and he appears as an icon so I can click on him and he'll fly out and now I see this this history panel appearing I can collapse him back down just by clicking on this white double-headed arrow by the way collapse him back down to an icon and same with this guy down here properties this is a new panel by the way inside Photoshop CS6 and I'm looking forward to showing you how the new properties panel works and same story I can just click on this white double headed arrow to have him fly back down reduce back down to just an icon all right now there's even more panels that we have available to us if I head to the window menu we get a full alphabetical list of every single panel that we have available to us inside Photoshop. And as you can see, there's a massive number of panels that we have here. Again, don't feel overwhelmed. There's a lot of stuff in here that you might never find yourself using. So for instance, maybe I want to pop open the Layer Comps panel, a very cool panel, by the way. This guy pops open. Notice he appears as an icon beneath the Properties and History panels there. So I can expand and collapse this guy, right? Have him fly open there. Notice he is a part of a panel group. Layer Comps is grouped with Notes, which I never use. But anyway, he's packed in there. Maybe in just a little while, I'll show you how to customize your panel groups. But in any regard, that's the idea. We head up to the window panel. We look for the panel that we're after. Perhaps I'm after styles. Well, styles is already available on the right-hand side, so he now springs to life, right? So if you're having trouble finding a panel over on the right-hand side, just head to the window menu and look for them. But as I say, there's all sorts of panels that we have available to us. I'm going to pop open perhaps my brush panel. And there we have now our massive brush panel. All right, so hopefully no worries there. Now let me show you a couple of quick things in terms of how the interface behaves, the, the interface behavior in relation to panels. Well, first of all, I already know that when a panel is expanded, like the brush panel, we can collapse them back down to just an icon by clicking on the white double-headed arrow. No problems there. Here's a few other things that we can do. The main set of panels, I guess we can call them, over on the right-hand side, we can actually collapse them down as well. Notice up towards the very top right 
of this main panel area, we also have a white double-headed arrow collapse to icons. I'm going to click on that guy, and all of a sudden, that main panel area collapses down, and now I see just the icon and the name, color, swatches, adjustments, styles, and so on and so on, right? Which is pretty cool, giving me more screen real estate inside the main Photoshop interface. Again, just use that white double-headed arrow to collapse everything down. Now, what we see here right now is what's referred to as the icon and the name view. What we can do is bring our cursor into this, this vertical divider here, and I can actually drag to the right and collapse these guys all the way down to just icons, very much like we had that, that center column of panel icons that we saw earlier, right? So we can actually collapse these guys way down if we want. Or what we could do is we could grab either of these vertical dividers and stretch them out. Maybe I want to go with the panel name and the icon view, something like this. Or maybe I want the main set of panels to be just icons, and I want this second set of panels to be icons and names, or who knows, maybe I want to stretch them out even further, or maybe even use the white double-headed arrow that I find at the top of the second panel view and crank these guys open, something like this, right? It really all depends on how you like to work. Some people like working in a very collapsed mode, you know, just icons, something like this, giving them the most amount of space available to them inside Photoshop. That's just fine. Other people, they like to work in sort of the default view, which was, you know, back to this sort of a view, right? It's entirely up to you. Experiment, have fun, see what works for you. So I wanted to mention that. The only other thing that I wanted to mention, and this isn't too terribly exciting, but I'll bounce it off you anyway. What you can do here with your individual panels is we can come along and we can actually collapse them down. If I double click, for example, on the color panel tab, I can actually collapse that guy all the way down. Again, perhaps saving myself a little bit of screen real estate. Maybe I only want to focus on layers for the time being, which, by the way, is a panel that you're going to use a lot, right? Photoshop really is all about layers. So I don't want to see the other guys for now. I want to see layers. And then maybe later on, I do want to get into some swatches. So I'll click on swatches, expand that guy open, do what I need to do there, and then double click on that that panel tab to collapse them back down. Just kind of a neat thing that you can do there. So take a moment, have some fun, experiment with your panels, experiment with what we have available underneath the window menu, see what there is to see there, and also try adjusting your view. Maybe you want to go all the way down to just the icons, or maybe you don't like the icons, maybe you want to keep everything nice and expanded, maybe something like this, I have no idea. But set yourself up in a way that's comfortable for you.